Howdy folks, it's the Creepy Kentuckian here with you from DeadPit.com. Today we're taking a look at a fun one, one of my all-time favorites from back in the day when I was a young kid. It's the first time I'd seen this movie in quite a while. It's a new 4K edition of this movie. This one was recently released by MVD in Lightyear. It is my favorite Jim Wynorski movie. I love all of his movies, but this one's probably the one that I've seen the most. I'm a huge fan. This is my Swamp Thing movie. This is the return of Swamp Thing. This one stars Heather Locklear returning Louis Jordan and Dick Duroc as the Swamp Thing. And we're going to take a look at it. This is 4K. This is a unique one to get a 4K Kind of a deluxe edition too, guys. Look at this slip cover and that artwork there. I always love the artwork. It kind of gives you an idea of what you're in for with the Return of Swamp Thing. Not really a scary movie at all. It doesn't even attempt to be. It's a little bit of an anomaly from the late 80s, but one that I absolutely love. And just recently rewatched this 4K. After many years, I hadn't seen it, so I was catching up with a, an old friend. Let's take a look at it both. The opening segment of the movie is one that I often recall quite a bit. Swamp Thing makes an appearance towards the beginning of the movie, and he has the quote, I am Swamp Thing. And then Born on the Bayou plays Credence Clearwater Revival. You see a lot of the... Classic artwork from the DC comic series, which this is based on, by the way. I'm not a comic book guy, but uh, I do know that it, it is based on a character from DC Comics called Swamp Thing. Now, the movie stars Heather Locklear. She's playing Abigail Arcane, the stepdaughter of the evil Dr. Arcane. And she decides, you know, she's a, I think she's a vegetarian. She's a horticulturologist or something like that studies plants so she already has a a plant fascination you get that right away uh very airheadish heather locklear type character perfect for heather locklear almost maybe it was written for heather locklear i'm not really sure but she decides to investigate her mother's mysterious death and dr arcane who we thought was killed in the original movie, his returns, and risen somehow, I think with some sort of experimental serum that brought him back. They didn't really explain that, but Dr. Arcane is still in the swamp. He is doing some of his bizarre experiments and creating these monsters and creatures and all this stuff. And he's also trying to find a serum that will achieve immortality for him. And the stepdaughter, Abigail, comes into the picture. And she's like, well, she has the same genetics as her mother. Maybe I can get some of her DNA and become immortal. And along the way, you know, Swamp Thing, of course, gets involved there. He is not down with the evil Dr. Arcane. And Abigail and Swamp Thing meet up and they kind of fall in love as well. So there's that going on. Probably my favorite part of the movie involves the two kids. Not only because the the little boy, Daniel Emery Taylor played the little redheaded boy who has the thick accent as a kid. And I did not see that a lot when I was growing up watching movies and everything. I did not see the Southern accent in a lot of movies, especially an authentic one. And they're just really funny characters, especially him. He kind of steals the whole movie for me. And we see hit, we've seen him a lot of the times over the years at conventions and everything else. Really great guy, but yeah, I mean that I think he is one of the unsung heroes of the movie. Uh, you know, a little fat kid running around trying to uh, look at dirty books and stuff, stuff that kids did for real. You don't see see that much anymore. Return of Swamp Thing is not some sort of masterpiece as far as the plot and storytelling and all that. You've got a lot of hokiness. The entire movie is tongue-in-cheek. Uh, you know, it's kind of winking at you the entire movie. There's never anybody in this. And everybody does great with the, role, the roles that they're given. But there's nothing like, oh, man, 
you know, like somebody's in danger here. There's going to be something bad happen in this movie. No, you never get that at all. Now, this 4K edition recently came out. Lightyear Entertainment brought this thing out in MVD. They did, I think the MVD Rewind Edition just came out probably four or five years ago on Blu-ray. And people were really excited about getting all the special features on it. I think all the special features are ported over on this 4K as well. It's a two-disc set. It includes Blu-ray and a 4K and the Blu-ray has most of the extra features on it as well. As far as the transfer on this, um, this looked as good as Return of Swamp Thing would probably ever look. Um, it's not one of those movies that's ever going to look like phenomenal. It's not going to be a reference uh, 4K to put in, but I'm sure, I'm positive here, that we'll never get a better looking copy of this movie in home video. Taking a closer look at this, this is a slip cover here. Take the slip cover off, and you get the same artwork on the inside. It is the Blu-ray and the 4K. Now, the special features on this, there are a lot. On the 4K, there is an extra feature, Reflections on Swamp Thing, 35 years later, an interview with the producer Michael Aslan, a Rift Tracks music video for your ever-loving Swamp Thing by the Rift Tones. The Blu-ray features an audio commentary with the director Jim Wynorski, composer Chuck Serino, and editor Leslie Rosenthal. This was from the 2018 Blu-ray. Uh, audio commentary from director Jim Wynorski from 2003. Interviews with Wynorski, editor Rosenthal, composer Serino, and Lightyear Entertainment executive Arnie Holland. An original theatrical trailer, six promotional TV clips, two TV spots, two Greenpeace public service announcements, a 1989 promo reel, photo galleries, and more. So if you guys are out there like me, you grew up with this movie, watched it on USA Network, watched it on video, and you just have a particular fondness for hokey, fun, tongue-in-cheek, sci-fi, adventure, horror. Not really horror. There's really no horror in this. Other than Swamp Thing kind of is scary when you first see him, but... Eh, this is a high recommendation, though. I love this movie. It is my favorite Swamp Thing movie, and I think it's Jim Wynorski's masterpiece. It's the ultimate edition to pick up on home video. Check it out today. It is available now, and check us out. We are over at deadpit.com. Give us the thumbs up. Off your butt. Like, subscribe. And if you subscribe, here's something else you can do. Once you subscribe, you can click the bell notification, right? And it'll notify you anytime that Dead Pit puts up new shit. Or don't. I really don't give a if you do. I don't. want you to. I want you to. <laughs> I don't let's, care. let's keep our community growing here on I, YouTube. I don't, I don't like it. I don't want you to do nothing. Listen, they need to do that, pal. No, don't you dare yeah. touch it. Thumbs up subscribe and click that bell. Hey everyone, it's Oak Early Jaws. We got some great shirts for you. We got Faces of Death Part 2. We got creepy stories to tell in Kentucky. The Colonel would approve. We also got DeadPit.com. We got Dead Pit Radio with the little fucking Dead Pit dude on there. We got It Never Ends, a Halloween spoof parody of the new movie. We got It at Night. We got the Rad Pack. Uncle Rad himself. It just gets better and better. So go on and get you some shirts over at Team Public. It just gets better and better, bulls. Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Dead Pit on Patreon.com is the only place to check out a complete archive of the old Dead Pit radio shows all the way back from 2005 on, in addition to the midweek shows and fan commentaries, exclusive podcasts, and much more. Dead Pit on Patreon.com if you're interested. Tears started only one dollar.